G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. And Bob, now, I've received a lot of emails recently about how to set a bandsaw up, and I started to answer a few, and I thought instead of making another video, what I'll do for this episode is just show you a video I made for a local machinery outlet, which is Gregory Machinery, and they're the agents for Laguna Tools. So if you're in Australia, check them out. Gregory Machinery, Laguna Tools. They'll look after you like they've looked after me. And Alan, if you don't think I gave you a plug, I just did. So please, just enjoy the next video. It's about 14 minutes. It explains how to set up bandsaws and get them working to their optimum uh, way of working. What do you reckon, Bob? I'm Steve Hay. This is a bandsaw. Now, why is it called a bandsaw? Simple, because it has a saw blade in the shape of a band. Now, they can vary from bands that are wide with teeth largely spaced apart to much thinner and smaller blades with teeth closer, to, closer together. And they all have their own uses. That's why it's called a bandsaw, but how does a bandsaw work? It's simple really. First of all, there's a large drive wheel located at the bottom of the machine, which is driven by an electric motor via a belt and pulley system. The bandsaw blade itself acts as a transfer cable and imparts a rotary motion of the lower wheel to the upper idler wheel completing the cycle, and doing so enables the toothed edge of the saw to continuously cut any materials that are placed in front of it. The size of the bandsaw is taken from the diameter of these wheels, so in this case it's a 14 inch bandsaw because the wheel is 14 inches. An 18 inch bandsaw has an 8 inch wheel. Other measurements to take into consideration when considering a bandsaw are the height of the cut or the throat size, that is the distance between the saw table and the underside of the guide setup. And finally, the width of cut, that's the distance between the inner side of the saw blade and the inside of the frame. Now bear in mind if you've got a fence, this measurement's going to change depending on how your fence is orientated. That covers basically how a bandsaw works. What I'd like to do now is strip it down and show you how to adjust it and tune it to make sure that it's in peak condition at all times. But before we start, there's some very rudimentary things you have to do with machinery and it's to do with safety. First of all, get yourself a push stick. Now, whether you make one from a design of your own or one you get online or you buy one commercially, they are the safest tool in the shop. They save your fingers, they save your jobs, and they save your time. And also get yourself some safety equipment. A good set of earmuffs and a pair of safety glasses. You can buy them separately or in a unit like this. Now, if you're going to use something with safety glasses, and you're like me and you wear glasses, make sure that the safety glasses can fit comfortably over your own glasses. So not only are you safe, you're not blind either. Okay, another safety tip with power tools or machinery, whenever you're going to do any work on it, whether it's changing a blade, adjusting a blade, or clearing some waste that's got caught, the first thing you should look at is the end of the plug. And the reason you should look at the end of the plug, it means you've had to turn it off of the wall and remove the plug. Now this machine is safe and can't accidentally be turned on. So number one, look at the end of the plug. Now I know this machine might look slightly different to the one that you have, but basically they all run on the same principle. This is just one of the new model designs that are coming out. But anything I do here, if there's something different with other bandsaws, I'll let you know. For example, there might be a difference in the way your guides are set up. On this particular bandsaw, I'm running ceramic guides. Now, they're quieter than other guide systems I've used in the past and have no moving parts, as, for example, the roller bearing guide system or the block type system, which, again, doesn't have any moving parts, but it does have a tendency to wear unevenly and requires constant adjustment. 
But whatever system you have on your machine, just do regular maintenance and keep them good in running order and they'll serve you well. Other differences may well be the cover plate. Many models have a circular plate. In this case, I have an adjustable screw plate and it's rectangular in shape. Another variation could well be the table levelling device. This is a fairly elaborate one, but I've seen on many models where they just use a simple tapered pin fitted in and they do the same job. No matter what you have, the job is to keep the two sides of the table in the same plane and level. If you've got an older machine, another thing that may have changed is most of the new models now are coming out with a tension release lever. All models have a tilt control facility to help centre the blade onto the wheels and prevent tracking. And finally, the locking knob for the height adjustment wheel, which is located here. This raises or lowers the guide assembly. Next, the tension wheel, which exerts tension on the bounce or blade itself by raising or lowering the top idler wheel. Now, many models have tension gauges, but it's been my experience that they aren't all that accurate, as many blades can vary in length by just a small amount, and that will require more or less tension than the gauge would indicate. And if there are any warning labels in place, read them and take note of the messages. First thing I'll do now is remove the blade from the machine. Remove the table levelling device, ease out the table cover plate, release the tension on the blade either by using the lever if you have one or if not back off the tension wheel. Next remove the blade from the top and bottom wheels and carefully feed it through the slot in the table. To fold a bandsaw blade up, hold it out in front of you and allow the top half of the blade to sag. And as it does, turn your wrists in towards each other in a brisk movement. The blade will automatically twist itself into three rings. To open a wound blade, carefully allow the circle to open and control the spring effect by locking the blade where they cross over one another with your fingers and release slowly. Just to recap, to fold the blade, allow the end farthest away from you to sag and as it does, briskly turn both wrists into each other. Another good tip is once they're wound up, wrap a little bit of tape around it and that'll prevent them from springing apart. Remove the fence. Take off the top guide assembly, then go under the table and release the table locking arms or nuts. Carefully lift up and remove the table assembly. Inspect the trunnion bearing surfaces for wear or damage. Next, remove the lower guide assembly, taking special note if there are any different size bolts where they go and inspect for damage or any obstructions. Well, there it is, a bandsaw stripped down to bare basics. And that's as far as any home enthusiast or amateur woodworker would need to go. Remember, to always refer to manufacturer's specifications, also their user manuals and any instruction guides that come with it. And anything to do with electrics, take it to a licensed electrician to work on it. This is only to set it up and for cleaning. Okay, what we'll do now is put it all back together and then we'll set it up for the blade we're using and we'll do some cuts. Reassembly. Clean out trunnion bearing surface of any unwanted sawdust or waste materials. Replace the lower guide assembly and at this stage only nip it up finger tight as there may be some further adjustment after the blade's been fitted. Before replacing the table, ensure the bolts are free to move and the threads are nice and clean and undamaged. Line up the bolts and then allow them to pass through the locating holes, careful not to damage the threads, fit on the nuts or arms and do them up to finger tight. Check the blade to be fitted, ensure that it's in good condition and the teeth are pointing down as they're fed through the guide assembly. Gently feed the blade edgeways through the slot in the table and turn the blade, then fit it over the top and bottom wheels. I found it easier to fit the top wheel first, then progress down to the bottom wheel. Locate the blade on the centre of the wheel rubber on both the top and bottom wheels, ensuring it's running through the lower guide assembly. Then apply tension to the blade, either with a tension lever, if your machine has one, or if not, use a tensioning wheel. Clean out the recess of the tabletop where the cover plate sits and insert the cover plate. Ensure it sits flush to the table. Insert the levelling device into the end housing of the table and make secure. 
Ensure that the table is set at exactly 90 degrees to the side of the blade. Minor adjustments to the table level may be made at this stage. And once you're satisfied with the results, lock down and tighten the table stop bolt. Set up the guide assemblies as follows. Allow an air gap of about the thickness of a piece of abrasive paper of 120 grit between the back of the blade and the rear rubbing block or bearing set. Assemble the block so that it is parallel to the table. Fit the side guides or bearings so they just contact the blade on either side without any blade distortion at the point of contact. Set the blade so the teeth are protruding from the assembly and the back of the gullets are just in front of the guide blocks or bearings. Do the same for the lower guide setup. Turn the top blade by hand to ensure that all turns freely and there's no binding or catching of the blade anywhere in its travel and it runs smoothly throughout its entire length. Fitting the fence, if you have one, is the reverse of its removal. Insert running gear on the frame, then fit the fence itself. Check for squareness in both the vertical and horizontal planes and adjust as or if required. To see how well we've set up, let's try some cuts. Make sure you've adjusted the guides assembly to the correct height, that is, just above the height of the piece that's being cut. Bring the fence in, pull the timber away from the blade, get comfortable, switch on the bandsaw, allow it to get to full speed, slowly feed the timber, or in this case plywood, onto the blade. Once you've started the cutting process, start to use the push stick as the timber travels closer to the blade. At the end of the cut, use the push stick to move the timber completely past the end of the blade to ensure that the piece is cut all the way through. Turn off the machine, allow the blade to completely stop. Using the push stick, poke the timber through and retrieve it by reaching behind the saw blade. Check for squareness of the cut by using a combination square. And if it's the same width all the way down, this would indicate that the fence is square to the blade and the blade is square to the table. Next we'll do a rip cut using a miter box. Make sure the angle on the miter box is at 90 degrees using a 90 degree square. Once it's been set, insert it into the table. And note, it's not a good practice to use a miter box and a fence together as the workpiece can twist and will jam on the blade, which at best will ruin your job, or at worst, can cause serious personal injury. Set workpiece away from the blade, switch on the bandsaw, allow it to reach full speed, and feed the piece onto the blade. Use the push stick at the end to move the timber past the blade, pull back the miter box once the cut's complete, switch off the machine, wait until it's completely stopped, and then use a carpenter square to check for accuracy. Well, I'm pretty impressed. I think we did a pretty good job on setting that bandsaw up. It's cutting true and it's cutting square and that's what I like to see. That's it, as far as bandsaws go anyway. I hope you learned something from that and you can put it to good use. Well, I hope you enjoyed that bandsaw 101. Bob's just cleaning the bench off for me. I look forward to your company next time and next time we'll possibly be making a bookcase. So until then, this is Steve. That's a lovely view they've got of you, Bob. Until then, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe when we better go for a run. What do you reckon? Okay, we're off. Bye for now. No matter where you are in Australia, Gregory Machinery can deliver. And remember to ask them about the fantastic range of Laguna tools, as used by me. Steve Hay, Woodworking Masterclass.